Despite how much publishers love the idea of franchises, it can sometimes take a lot to justify continuing them. Because while the likes of FIFA and Battlefield don't have to worry about their future if they release a dud or two, most games are forced to hit ridiculously high bars both commercially and critically if they want to guarantee a sequel. In fact, history is riddled with franchises that have been stopped dead in their tracks because of one disastrous misstep. In 2017 alone, Mass Effect was thrown to the dogs because Andromeda didn't do as well as EA would have liked, and that game was far from a total disaster both in terms of sales and critical response. With that said, while it can be disappointing when franchises are canned because of a bad game, it's even worse when they're put down despite the developers releasing a great project. Publishers demand such a huge margin of success for their titles that it means anything that doesn't rake in hundreds of millions of dollars is considered a total failure. It isn't exactly fair, and these great titles didn't deserve to be the death knell of their respective franchises. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 great video game sequels that still killed their franchises. Number 9. DMC – Devil May Cry DMC was doomed long before anyone ever got a chance to play it. Written off as an insulting addition to the franchise just because the main character received an emo makeover, fans of the series didn't give the game the time of day when it hit shelves. Which was a huge shame, because DMC was a brilliant continuation of the hack and slash franchise's core philosophies. Featuring the same over the top action as the previous games, the reboot didn't put a foot wrong from a gameplay perspective, but still suffered because it had the gall to change Devil May Cry's signature visual design. All because fans weren't willing to give the game a chance, DMC underperformed commercially despite scoring pretty highly with the critics. Acting as a false star for the franchise's new direction, the Devil May Cry brand has since been dead ever since, and this new version of Dante probably won't be brought back if the series ever returns. Number 8. Homefront – The Revolution Although it got off to a pretty shaky start, Homefront – The Revolution was a surprisingly good sequel to a mediocre original game. Dropping the linear, Call of Duty inspired focus of the first title, and instead throwing players into an open world dystopia, the sequel, uh, revolutionised the series by changing its core approach to the gameplay entirely. Despite being a great game however, the release of the revolution was overshadowed by its performance issues and downright hilarious bugs, becoming known as a completely broken mess at launch thanks to a troubled development and a botched release. The sequel was quickly written off by fans as yet another underwhelming addition to the Homefront canon denying it the chance it deserved. Number 7. Max Payne 3 Dropping the more open-world design Rockstar is known for in favour of a more linear third-person action experience, Max Payne 3 was a long-in-development sequel that had a lot to prove to fans. Thankfully, once Max Payne 3 dropped, it became apparent that the wait was worth it. Transporting Max to an entirely new, sun-kissed environment with a tone that was closer to Man on Fire than the original's Maltese Falcon. The title was a blisteringly visceral third-person shooter that managed to retain Remedy's original vision whilst giving it a distinct Rockstar makeover. Having less appeal than the likes of GTA or Red Dead though, the game only grabbed a fraction of the audience from Rockstar's other franchises. Not to mention, fans hated the various shots of a bald, Hawaiian shirt-wearing Max, not realising that this only represented half of the game and that the original look would still be present and correct. Despite being one of the best action games of the last generation then, the game effectively killed the noir franchise's attempt at a revival, and Rockstar haven't shown any interest in trying again anytime soon. Number 6. Condemned 2 – Bloodshot An interesting psychological horror game for the Xbox 360, Condemned 2 – Bloodshot's brand of body horror provided a much needed relief from the constant shooters that plagued consoles in the late 2000s. Taking the player into the weird world of an underground cult after following a trail of increasingly mangled dead bodies, the game slowly dropped in more and more fantastical psychological elements that transformed an otherwise grounded story into something much more supernaturally inspired. However, because the sequel dropped the seven inspired gritty aesthetic of the original in favour of this more supernatural and fantastical plot, it was seen as a huge misstep for an otherwise promising overarching narrative. Players came to Bloodshot hoping for more of the same atmospheric crime scene investigation that they loved the first time around, so when they received a sequel that featured a villain with vocal cords that could explode other people's faces, well, they weren't exactly thrilled. Number 5. Doom 3 Doom was gloriously brought back to life with 2016's reboot, but it took 12 years and multiple failed attempts to get there, leaving a 12 year gap that whilst it ticked by, felt as though the series was never ever coming back. Dropping the frantic, arcadey shooting of the original games in favour of survival horror-inspired gameplay, Doom 3 was a huge departure for the series. 
focusing much more on plot and atmosphere than balls to the wall demon killing. The sequel was an attempt to usher the series into an entirely new generation. It was an approach that proved to be divisive to say the least though, and Doom 3 split fans and critics right down the middle when it released back in 2004. It wasn't the audience that killed the franchise off this time around though, as Doom 3 set the series on a trajectory that was far too similar to other shooters at the time. Going into the fourth game, the devs couldn't quite figure out the series' identity, and the franchise entered a deathly slumber for well over a decade. Number 4. Prince of Persia – The Forgotten Sands After the disastrous but severely underrated 2008 reboot of Prince of Persia failed to take off, Ubisoft returned to focus on the same storyline of the original revered trilogy. Set during the seven year gap between the Sands of Time and Warrior Within, the Forgotten Sands attempted to bridge the two titles while at the same time taking the series back to its roots. While it was a good decision from Ubi to refocus the franchise on what people wanted though, the game dropped at a time when nobody was really interested in Pop's brand of platforming anymore. It wasn't just changing tastes that killed the title's chance to win back an audience though, as the game was already on the back foot because of how much the 2008 reboot soured the franchise for fans. Likewise, Assassin's Creed was just taking off at the time, completely overshadowing anything the Forgotten Sands had to offer. Number 3. Burnout Paradise If you don't think Burnout is the best racing series ever, then you're just wrong. Forget sims like Gran Turismo and even the more freeform anarchy of recent titles like Forza Horizon, because no racing game has ever quite matched the sense of speed and destruction as the original Burnout games. Taking the core gameplay of the series and transitioning it into a huge intricate open world full of signature franchise activities, Burnout Paradise was an effort to make the arcade racer find the audience it deserved. Loved across the board and viewed as a fan favourite, Paradise tragically never received a sequel. Consequently, the developers moved on to other racing franchises and Burnout was left to rot. It's still frustrating to look back on now, because Paradise laid down such a strong foundation for the series going forward. The open world format suited the racer perfectly, and the gaming world would have been so much better had it received more Burnout sequels, rather than middling races like The Crew or Test Drive Unlimited 2. Number 2. Watch Dogs 2 Although the first Watch Dogs disappointed players hoping for a revolutionary next-gen experience, after it released Ubisoft immediately went back to the drawing board to fix the problems that made it such a laughingstock. Dropping the grim dark seriousness of the title and injecting it with a whole load of fun instead, the sequel was a massive improvement on the first game in just about every department, and ended up being one of the most enjoyable open world titles of that year. Despite working to improve on all of the flaws of the original though, the stigma of the first Watch Dogs still haunted the sequel when it released. Fans were weary about taking a chance on a sequel no matter how good it was supposed to be, and as a result nobody turned up when the game eventually hit shelves. It didn't help either that the title dropped in the middle of a particularly stacked release window, being surrounded by hugely anticipated games like Battlefield 1 and Final Fantasy 15. Watch Dogs 2 just had no room to breathe, and consequently didn't sell anywhere near as well as its predecessor. Number 1. Splinter Cell Blacklist Moving away from the style of the previous games, 2010's Splinter Cell Conviction acted as a sort of soft reboot for the classic stealth franchise, turning Sam Fisher into a Jason Bourne type rogue rather than the calm and collected assassin he used to be. While that game radically moved away from the core of the original titles, its sequel Splinter Cell Blacklist attempted to merge the two opposing sides of the series together, and damn did it succeed. Giving players the option to tackle levels in either the aggressive way promoted by Conviction or the more methodical approach championed by Chaos Theory, Blacklist should have been everything fans of the series wanted. Sadly, potentially because players were put off so much by the direction of Conviction, the sequel didn't attract the audience it needed to. Despite being a grand return to form, Blacklist underperformed commercially and is rarely ever recognised as the great Splinter Cell game it is. As a result, the franchise has been on ice, undeservedly so, ever since. So that's our list. Feel free to shout at me in the comments over DMC, but while you're there make sure to like, share and subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for even more lists like this every single day. I'm Josh, and I'll see you soon.